at that thing called pedigree intro. It should be really a pedigree warm up or whatever. It is what it is. So this was your uh, pedigree. Now, if we look at autosomal dominant, let's kind of do a quick review. Squares mean? Circle means? Shaded means? They have the trait. Okay. So if we're talking about an autosomal dominant trait, autosomal dominant, does this individual have the dominant trait? No. No. So that must mean that they're what then? They're, if we use the letter A's, and really the letters we use don't really matter. Yeah, they must be little a. They have the recessive trait. They have the opposite of the trait we're looking at. And the only time we see that uh, recessive trait is in the absence of dominance. So if shaded means they have the dominant trait, shaded and unshaded means they don't, then mom and dad must both be little a, little a. Do we care about X's and Y's for autosomal stuff? No, I don't even care about X's and Y's. Just realize that biologically we need a male and a female to produce children. Okay, but beyond that, I don't really care. So little a, little a, little a, little a, because they're not shaded. This is for autosomal dominant. If they're shaded and they have, it's an autosomal dominant trait, they have the trait, so they have to have at least Correct, correct. So they have to be a big A something. And this son, right, because these are parents, these are kids, this son is big A something. So the idea of a, this Punnett square is if mom was little a, little a, and dad was little a, little a, the possible children they could have is that. Are those, I should say. Is this big A something anywhere in these four boxes? No. So can this pedigree work for autosomal dominant? No. No. If one of the boxes, if these things are in one of the boxes, then it's good. Then it could work. Okay? That's if it's autosomal dominant. Shaded means they have the trait, they have the dominant trait. If we look at autosomal recessive, what is the trait? Dominant or recessive? Then? Recessive. So shaded means they have the dominant trait or recessive trait? Recessive. Okay, and when do we see a recessive trait? When it's? Okay, so these shaded individuals have the trait. It's a recessive trait. And if we use the letter A's, again, we could really use any letter we want, the shaded then indicates that these children are little a, little a. They have to be little a, little a. Does dad have the recessive trait? So he must be big A something. And does mom have the trait? She must be big A something. So the idea of this Punnett square is we have a big A something and a big A something. And if I were to go through and fill the Punnett square out with the information that I do know, that's what I get, right? So I know mom and dad have to be big A something. I have one box left. Is it possible for this box to be a little a little a? Yes. yes. If both mom and dad have a little a. Correct. If both mom and dad have a big A little a. What do we call it for an autosomal recessive trait if the individual is a big A little a? Heterozygous. What's another word we could say that they they are a carrier. Do they have the trait? No. no. Are they carrying the trait? Yeah. Now, when I say do they have the trait, I'm, what I'm really saying is are they expressing the trait? Do they show the trait? And you could say because they, 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 they have it, right? They, they have, no, they, they're carrying it. They don't have the trait. They're carrying the trait. So if mom and dad were both heterozygous or carriers, then this this box is a possibility, so then yes, that could work for this mode of inheritance. Switching gears, and I know the switching gets kind of, it, it messes with you, I understand. It's just part of the, part of the thing. Sex link recessive, now do I care about X's and Y's? Yes. Now I care about X's and Y's. <laughs> So square is an XX or an XY? XY. XY. Circles are? XX. Okay. Whether they're shaded or not shaded, 
That's what our sex chromosomes need to look like. Now, where is the allele? On the X chromosome or the Y chromosome? And only the X chromosomes, at least the ones we're looking at, are only on the X chromosome. So, if they are shaded, if we use X, if our choices are X big A, X little a, and Y, if they are shaded, can they have any of these? Can they have any X big A's? No. Can they have these? Yes. Yes, and they need these, and only X little a's. Now, why? There is no A carried on it, so we're really looking for only X's with the little a's. So if a female is shaded, what are the A's that go with her X's? Little a. And the second one? Little a. Right, the little a and the little a. She can only have recessive X little a's. So she has two X little a's. If the sun has it, Okay, has the trait in question. What must the son's A be on his X chromosome? What's on the Y chromosome? Nothing. Good. Good, I should say. Nothing is on that. So that's what the children would have to be. Now, what about mom and dad? What does dad's X chromosome have to be? If he's not shaded, he has to be big A. And if mom is not shaded, Big A something, right? It's got to be a big A something. Just based upon not shading. Okay, I'm only looking at the shading versus not shading. So again, kind of filling out the information I have in a Punnett square. I have an X big A Y. I have an X big A something. So filling in all of the information that I have, I know that. I also know this is going to be something, and I do know this is going to be an X chromosome, right? It has to be an X chromosome because this is not. So then this one is going to be X something A. I'm sorry, X something Y. So let's start, I don't know why, but let's start with the sun. This sun is this sun the sun on the pedicle? Is this one the one that I wrote in the lower right? No. No. Is it is this is it possible that this sun could be that sun? If if mom was X big A X little A, what do we call mom? If if this were the case, what would we call mom? Carrier. She's a carrier. Good. So if mom is a carrier, this sun is possible. It's possible. Is this daughter possible? No. Here's my two daughters. This is not the right one. And even if this is an X little a, daughter is still not possible. I intentionally picked this one because I was getting a little concerned that people were drawing the conclusions that if it was autosomal recessive and that worked, then automatically sex-linked recessive worked. They're recessive, that's true, that's common, but one is on the X chromosomes and one is not. So they do have different modes of inheritance. Questions I can answer about these? Okay. Then, let me quick recap. What's due tonight in Canvas? So in Canvas tonight, there are three things from this packet. If you want a packet to take and finish, because this is due in Canvas tonight, you can take one of these with you. If you use it today and you're done with it, you can re please return it for my next group. But this packet goes along, and there's two sides of this. Okay, the student scratch paper, two sides, due tonight at 11.59 in Canvas. Also, part of this is you're to write generalization statements. There are 10 generalization statements that hopefully you were able to draw based upon the pedigrees you worked through. This is a single page submission that's due in Canvas tonight at 11.59. The inside two pages of this is a separate, a third Canvas submission, and this and this, these two pages go together for your third and final Canvas submission that's due tonight at 11.59 p.m. 
Okay, those are things that are due in Canvas tonight. So when your next task is complete, if you need one of these, they're right there. What I'm going to do is I am passing out a practice quiz for you. And this practice quiz, I got it over here, uh, is something that I'm going to ask you to work on independently. If you would like, and if you find it, ben if you think it would be beneficial to use the generalization statements, you are welcome to use those. Honestly, I don't know if they'd be super, super helpful. Um, the intent of those generalization statements was more to hopefully kind of guide you to draw some conclusions along the way. But if you feel that those 10 generalization statements will be helpful for you, go ahead and use it. I'm okay with that. The intent is only that page, not flipping inside and only using the front page. But this um, is going through, and this is something you're going to either, when you're finished with, you're going to turn into me. Or at the end of the hour, if you aren't done by it at the end of the hour, you're going to turn it into me. Okay? So the first couple of questions are general questions about pedigrees. When you take a look at question number nine, it's asking about the pedigree below. And if it were autosomal dominant, does it work? And it, is it consistent, meaning does it work? And if the answer is it does not work, circle which parents and offspring are not possible. Okay? If you turn the page to page two, number 10 is the exact same pedigree, but now it's a different mode of inheritance, autosomal recessive. And then number 11 is exactly the same pedigree, but now it's asking about sex-linked recessive. If you take a look at question number 12, question number 12 is referring to number child number five in the previous pedigrees. So question number 12 says, if number five were to have children, would he then have to worry about passing that trait on, passing the trait, it should be comma in this pedigree, comma, but it's a little bit, in the pedigree, onto the children. Now, there are three different modes of inheritance you look at for the exact same pedigree. What I'm asking in question number 12 is, does number five have to worry about passing the trait on, okay, to if he had kids? But there's three different pedigrees you need to worry about. So if the autosomal dominant did work, then does number five have to worry about it? If the autosomal dominant didn't work, you don't even have to talk about it because it's not possible, okay? If the autosomal recessive worked, does number five have to worry about it? If, number, if autosomal recessive doesn't work, don't have to talk about it because it's not possible. If sex-linked recessive works, does number five have to worry about it? If it doesn't work, don't worry about it because it's not possible, okay? Um, then the next pedigree on page three is a set different pedigree. And question number 13 is asking you to determine, is this pedigree for a sex-linked recessive, an autosomal dominant, or an autosomal recessive? At question number 13, I'm not asking you to fill it all in. I'm asking, does it work or does it not work? The intent of number 13 is really go through and find can you, does it break down at some point? If the answer it breaks down for like autosomal and dominant, it's done. One spot done, don't even worry about it. It doesn't work for autosomal and dominant. If it works completely, then it's possible. So the idea is which one of these three does it work for or which ones does it work for? Um, you don't have to go and completely fill it out. It's just identifying where does it work everywhere. Maybe you want to write letters in. Number 14 then says, hey, let's work it through with some letters. Um, and then the last thing I want to mention is number 17 on the back is I'm asking you to draw a pedigree from scratch. I haven't asked you to draw a pedigree from scratch yet, but the idea you've been working with pedigrees, now is just kind of putting it into you know, practice. When you draw these pedigrees, I would emphasize that you don't get hung up on um, genotypes, I would focus on males and females, marriages, marriage lines, and children, um, having the trait and shading, not having the trait, not shading, 
And then afterwards, at the very end, then it talks about filling in all the genotypes. So I would focus on drawing the pedigree with the proper, proper moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas, um, shading them appropriately first, and then dealing with genotypes. That would be my suggestion. As you're working through this individually, if you have a question about what is being asked, let me know, and I'll help you out with that. When you're done, you're going to turn these into me. If the class time runs today, then you'll turn them into me. These get turned in really. That's kind of the, the thing. If you finish this before the end of the hour, which most of you probably will, remember all of this stuff is due in Canvas at 11.59 tonight. So if you didn't finish this, you have some class time to work on it. 